Hello and welcome to Ruroni Kenshin, Ju Yushi Inbo Hen. No Enjo Kyoto Rine for now. Um, I thought I'd do something different. Uh, for those of you that know, this is an RPG game released on the first PlayStation. It was the second Ruroni Kenshin game to be released on that console. And I don't think many of you have ever seen um, any gameplay footage of this, or definitely not a Let's Play. I, I was not able to find any kind of Let's Play from someone on YouTube, uh, or anywhere else for that matter. So I thought it was a pretty good idea to, to play this and record this for you guys. Um, I'm also very excited to play this, because I've never, never played this before. Um, it's a 2D RPG as you can see. The, it does definitely resemble a 16-bit RPG, uh, similar to what the Super Nintendo uh, had in its glory days. Apart from the FMV sequences and some of the music, this game could have, uh, could have been on the Super Nintendo just as well. But, well, whatever, we're not discussing the console right now, so um, let's just jump into it. There is no translation of this game. Um, also, since this is uh, the story of the game is completely original, it ha it does not have anything to do with the main storyline of Rurouni Kenshin. The creators of this game included um, yeah, definitely the Rurouni Kenshin characters are in here, but you don't directly control them. Instead, you take control of. Oh, let me. Okay. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Instead, you take control of one of two characters, either Hijiri, which is this young man here, or Hikaru, which is this young woman here. Um, we'll be playing uh, as Hijiri first, since the walkthrough I have does mainly feature his um, story. There are a couple. There is one walkthrough for Hikaru as well, but the game with the two characters they are similar. But there are a couple of differences here and there, um, so character-specific things. Um, yeah, you're you're probably wondering who are these people? Who is Hijiri? Who is Hikaru? The creators of the the game they made these characters uh, specially for this game. Um, I don't believe Nobuhiro Watsuki had anything to do with their design process because they don't really resemble his style. Um, the clothing is way off, the, the hair and the faces, they could have been made by him, but I don't really think he was involved in this design process. He probably had to give the, the green light for this, uh, for these characters, but he probably didn't design them. So we'll be picking Hijiri. So with no official or with no translation at all um, and no um, story to base us to base upon, like we, we have with Enjo Kyoterine, of course that game is also in Japanese, but we know the story. If you know the anime or you know the manga, then you know the story. With this game, not so much. Um, that's also why I have a walkthrough printed out lying next to me. Um, otherwise this it, otherwise this playthrough would become very very long indeed me just running around and looking to looking to find out what I should do um, this intro scene right here so we have Hijiri on the right right there uh, he's ambushed or assaulted by some thugs the from what I know about the story the main goal is to recover your memory because both uh, or if you pick Hijiri, he has memory loss at the start of the game. If you pick Hikaru, she has memory loss. So these characters... Oh, there's Kenshin. He comes to save the day. Yeah, I believe he does save us. So these two original characters are complete blank slates, which is nice because as a player you can easily identify with a blank character. Um, so. It's almost like you are there and Kenshin, Sanosuke and, and the entire cast are your friends and you're, on, you're going on this epic adventure or, or on this quest. It's not so much an epic adventure. Um, Juyushi Inbohen roughly translates to the Ten Warriors Conspiracy. I love these sprites. They're so cute. 
so the Ted Warriors conspiracy. Um, from again, from what I know, is that there are ten warriors similar to the Jupon Gatana, but definitely not the Jupon Gatana, who are wreaking havoc and making conspiracies in um, in Japan. Um, the game has five main areas. We have let me check. Yeah, definitely Tokyo, uh, Shimotsu, Shibukawa, Nitsuko, and Yokohama. So there are definitely some areas here. Um, it, unlike Enjo Kyoto Rine, which only takes place in Kyoto, um, or for some, there are a couple of parts that do play um, in Tokyo. This game is yeah pretty big from what I understand. At least the map size is. Okay, quick recap. Kenshin saved our butts, and now we get to enter a name. I have no idea. Is this? I think this is Hiragana. Um, I have no idea what what any of these symbols mean. So we're just gonna go with the most basic. Let's not make it too long. Um, I believe start. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Yeah. So here we go. The amnesia. I'm not sure. I think was it caused by the thugs assaulting us and hitting us down? It probably is. So yeah, we have to get our memories back. And Hijiri Or and Hikaru probably have some connections to these um, ten warriors, which are our main villains. Um, and as we play the game, we might find out more about that. Unfortunately, again, it's Japanese, so yeah. Okay, we find a note. That's it. Okay, that's it. Now... We can run around freely! Whee! Oh, there's a sprint button. Wow, he's really fast. I love this map. The sprites are really well done. Um, I definitely recognize a lot of the resources, the buildings, the lamps, everything, because a lot of these resources are shared on RPG Maker communities. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with RPG Maker, but this is a RPG making um, software um, where you can create your own 16-bit styled RPGs, just like you see now. I could make this. You could make this. Anybody could make this. And yep, you did it. Let's just go in here. I think this is Akabeko. And it is. Yahiko and Karu. Karu is scolding Yahiko, naturally. And they run off and bump into me. How rude. Wow, she looks angry. You better be apologizing. Oh god, a, a question. Oh god, what do we do? What do we do? Pick the top option. She has this very strict look on her face. in the dojo. Okay, wow. FMVs with animation. Um, Rurouni Kenshin style anime animation. Um, and yes, for those of you wondering, the animated clips they put in this game are specifically made for this video game. So it's very likely you've never seen any of this any of this Rurouni Kenshin animation. Which is definitely fun for me because I've seen everything. Or at least I thought I saw everything. Again with the strict look on her face. What's up with that? Oreva Tokyo Shizok Myoshi Yakiko Komata Kotogatara Nandemuina Tokyo Samurai. 
Yeah, you're definitely badass, I think. And here we are. So, as for basic controls, um, as in most RPGs or most Japanese uh, games, the circle button is accept and action oriented. So you talk to people by pressing circle and you confirm things by pressing the circle button. The triangle button brings up the menu. In the menu we have in order here, this is the item slot. Uh, with the left part over here, this part is your regular items and the right part are your special items, or sort of like your key items. Um, the cross button is just to return, um, so it's the other way around with Western games. Um, let me see the menu. Okay, this is equipment, it's like your character. Inside the equipment screen, you have uh, your weapons and armor. We don't have any weapons or armor at the moment. The second option is your special attacks. We've got one special attack for a moment. I'll talk about that a little bit further down when we get into actual combat. Uh, and the third option is to change the order of your characters. Seeing as only Hijiri is in the party currently, it's no point to. And the bottom option, which we can select, is the save and load option. So that's that. Um, the square button has no function at all. Um, apart from the D-pad, you, which you use to run, you have the R1 button, which is to sprint. Let's see if I can... Yeah, I can pull it off. Yeah, he's really fast. Wow. Cool. Okay, so we woke up in our bed. Let's go explore the dojo a little bit. Oh, look, this is the dojo training area. Oh, that didn't serve any purpose. I love how they did the porches. Because you see the, the shade on top, of my, uh, on top of his head? That's really, really well done. I think we have to find Kaoru and Yahiko. Where, the, where are they? They're just huge. He's really huge. I wonder whose bedroom this is. Oh, this is the kitchen. Will be the battle tutorial. <clears throat> One thing is pretty strange. Um, this is the battle tutorial, but it's explained through a FMV video. Um, that's why there's so much dirt around the characters, and then um, the video quality is pretty low at the moment. Um, I'm, I was, I'm, I'm actually really wondering why don't they just show me the battle screen to tell you about the battle screen. No, they put in a video. Why? It serves no purpose. Plus it looks worse. Maybe this is a good time to talk about the battle um, system or not because can't really... I've already rambled on too long and missed lots of points. So, Okay, we're just gonna skip this because I think I have the battle system down. Um, so we'll just gamble on it, that we know what we're doing. Yeah, I got all that. Okay, suddenly everybody leaves. Even our students do. Uh, let's 
go out some color. Someone's in distress. She's usually to the rescue. Yeah, yeah, definitely punks. I remember this guy, I think he was the one with the episode or the, the manga chapter with the punks who had the cannon. Uh, Kenshin sliced the cannonball in half, I believe. I think it's this guy. Or at least he looks similar. Oh, knocked down by a girl! For that matter, so was I. Don't mess with Kaoru. Um, oh, okay, an option. Um, huh. Normally I would just go with the top option and I don't think that'll make much difference. But the walkthrough says that if I select yes, Kaoru will fight them alone. If I select no, I won't let her fight alone and Yahiko arrives. So, yeah, sure, we want Yahiko's help. Here he is. Okay, this second question. If I say yes, Yahiko and Kaoru fight them. If I say no, I join the fight. It's all very weird. Why would I not join the fight? Alright, here we go. Uh, playing as Kaoru. So, you see... Let me take my page here. My notes. Um, it's turn-based. Um, you see Kaoru's uh, health at the top. At the bottom is the enemy's health. You see the symbols on the bottom bar. Um, you can see the first three symbols and the other three are question marks. Um, the higher... Well, let me rephrase that. The question marks are unknown to us. The first three, uh, which are represented by the blue um, square, blue is a medium attack, or a middle attack. Um, we can predict what the enemy is going to do, um, so we can counter accordingly. Um, like, as I said before, um, or I didn't, know, I probably didn't, um, this game, or the battle system works with a rock, paper, scissors uh, kind of format. So you have high attacks, medium attacks and low attacks. Um, low beats high, high beats medium and middle or medium attacks beat low. Um, it's definitely very recognizable because of the colors. Uh, a high attack is green, a medium attack is indicated by blue and a low attack is indicated by purple. So um, that's why we can see what the enemy is going to do. The other three boxes with the question marks in, in, in them, we can't, predict that. we can't predict what they'll do because Kaoru is just only able to predict the first three attacks. Um, the stronger the character you fight with, the more attacks you can predict. So for example, Kenshin would be able to uh, read all six of the attacks. I'm not sure if he can, but I'm just, it's just an example. Uh, we have two options currently which we can use, the other two are blanked out. We have um, a battle, no, um, I'm sorry, a fight option, an item option, you see, we have our awesome items, um, a next person option, which is to switch to the next person in line, um, and a flea option. We can't switch, I don't know why, I, I do hope Kaoru is not the only character we have in this battle, and flea, well, since this is a scripted battle, we can't escape from that. So the fight option. You see we have the same symbols here as our enemy does. The square or the circles um, above the attacks indicates how many times we can pull off that certain attack in one round. Um, so again, this is a high attack, this is a medium attack, and this is a low attack. The yellow um, option indicates our special techniques. Um, I'm pretty confused as to 
what kind these special attacks you see the, you see the blue bar that's basically our, our magic points or our, our ability points and you see how much it takes off um, the special attacks are a whole different array of attacking on their own so because you have a special high attack special medium attack special low attack a multi-hit attack a counter attack a long range attack and an ultimate attack um, so multi-hit counter long range ultimate and high medium and low are also all special attacks um, these are indicated by a sword that points downward upward uh, counter and so on I took these notes with the sword icons but I think this is downward so a downward sword would be a low attack this would be a medium attack and this would be a or this one would be a medium attack I don't know what this one is I have no clue guys I really don't either way um, let's respond let's respond accordingly so he has a medium attack so we're gonna counter that with a high attack he has another medium attack so we do another high attack and he has oh they're all medium attack so we go with high all the way then the other three are up to us so we'll go with a low medium another low another medium there we go sweet sweet so we did pretty well um let's see if we can pull it off again so this is a high attack a low attack beats a high attack um, this is a low attack and a low attack is beat by a medium attack and then again another high so we go with another low and the rest is up to us and let's just throw in a special attack just for the fun of it uh, that was easy we won Now you're smiling. Ooh, there's more of them. There's more of them. Okay, more questions. Um, hmm. Let's go against my instinct and go with no. Character select screen, isn't it? I think we can select our order, isn't it? I think it is. Well, Kauru did pretty good. Now you can see their stats. So you have health and mobility points. Well, Kauru is pretty buffed up. Well, let's go with Hijiri. Whatever. And Yahiko for the second one. And obviously Kaoru for the third one. Oh, okay. He can only predict two. And we have... What is that? A dagger? Looks like a long nail to me. Oh, yeah, well, anyway. So, medium attack. We counter that with... I'm really sorry. I'm not, I'm not used to these guys, and uh, I'm sure it'll progress as I play this game. That I, I know what beats what, or what the colors are. I know this high, medium, low, but the colors aren't indicated on the top, on the bottom bar. Um, so we have a medium attack that's beat by a high attack. We have a medium attack that's beat by a high attack, and then we don't know. Okay, so we go with low, low, medium. And throw in one more, just for fun. Oh no, okay. Oh cool, four hit, five hits. Wow, that was awesome. And yeah, he goes up. So again, medium is beat by a high attack. A low attack is beat by medium. And a low attack. Oh no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Can I cancel? I can cancel them. Cool. So, as a low attack is beat by medium, and a low attack is beat 
by medium. You know that? I'm, I'm losing it, guys. So, yeah, medium. And then we have a high attack, which is by low. Okay, that makes sense. Let's see if we can finally see a special attack. Do it, Yahiko. Okay. I don't know if that was a special. Either way, we got this. So, high, take low. Medium, we take high. And low, we take medium. Come on, let's see more special attacks. Let's just go with all of them. If you finish, if you manage to finish off your opponent with one of your special attacks, um, then FMV. If you manage to finish off your opponent with one of your special attacks, um, an FMV uh, video will play. Um, there are three in total per character, so I was just really curious to see what FMV it will play. So, we got two more to go with Kaoru. We beat these guys! Save the world! <laughs> She's so surprised. Yeah, so would I be. We just knocked them out and they did a little pirouette and fell down. Okay, any more guys? Um, who's sleeping there? Who is that? Oh, there's Megumi. Hi, Megumi! I'm, I'm doubting. Is this a strict look or just a determined look? Probably both. Memory loss hurts, huh? Oh, okay, my room is there to determine what his problem is. It's memory loss! Who is the guy in the bed? Is he one of the, the villains? Or the thugs who attack? Yeah, he is! What the hell? I believe his name was... Hinoyama. Is what my guide says. Oh, yeah, he goes pissed. Mugumi has a doctor. Of course, she can't have her patient being... Assaulted, even if he is a jerk. Why was she standing so close? What was that? A smack or a kiss? I don't know. No, it's not gonna be a kiss. He has amnesia too. <laughs> Probably explaining what what's going on, who these ten villains are, and why they ransacked the village in the intro of this game. They seem like really bad people. At least they don't want they don't want to take over Japan. Maybe they do. They probably do. And he just leaves. Okay. I'm sure this is really interesting dialogue, but yeah, unfortunately I don't I can't read Japanese. Ok, 
Okay, Kaoru and Yahiko join my party. And Mugumi is giving me some good advice. Hey, don't leave Mugumi. Where, where are you going? Ah, oh, come on. Whoa, okay. How do we heal? No, we didn't. Hmm, okay. Where was the bed I woke up in? Oh, I can't sleep. I don't know if I can sleep here and regain my health. Or just at the end. Let's just go outside. Oh, 